right, so thank you, uh, speakers, our esteemed panel. Uh, selfishly, I asked to do this class because I recently got into a partnership. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of questions in my mind like, how does this work? Uh, how does, you know, so I thought, who are the successful people that have done this for a long time? And I went to Roger first, and he's like, you know, this would be more fun if we include other people. And I thought, yeah, these are the ones. Thanks, so, Roger. Thank you for saying yes. <laughs> it was his You're fault. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Roger. <laughs> all right, so um, I broke this, uh, some of the questions we're going to ask into um, five different parts. One, the genesis, like how did you guys start doing this and why? Um, the politics, because we've got to include politics. Um, workload, selection, and the last one, money. So let's start with the genesis, and I'd like each of you as partners to answer. Um, some of these stories could be very long, so you know, sum it up. You know, rather rapid, you know, with that. Um, but but really give the heart of what it means to you. So the genesis. So Todd and Leanne, let's start with you guys. Um, introduce yourselves and tell us about your journey. You know, when did it begin? Were you independent breeders at first? Um, and and then why did you decide to? Do this. You start. Oh, right. a She's the worst. Well, Todd and I first met as like te oh, sorry, uh, Todd and I first met as teenagers uh, in Indiana. We weren't necessarily like friends, but we weren't foes. We were more like high acquaintances. Um, I remember when I was a kid, Todd came out to my house because he heard that I had like 700 rabbits jam packed in a barn. And did I have 700 rabbits jam packed in a yes, barn? Yes, you did. Uh, so we've always been friends. Uh, I've always been somebody who, before we co opt, um, put his rabbits up on the table. Things like that, and actually, uh, Todd is actually probably why I'm specifically sitting in this chair right now because I probably would have gotten out of a hobby, uh, not as a negativity, but in the early 2000s, I was so busy with my career that I kind of stepped back. I went on a rabbit show hiatus. I was only going to one or two shows a year. Uh, then I started with the mini satins in 05 because I love sheen to start with, and then uh, anything that I can do that's shiny and they're small, and I had a dream. I was like, oh, we can have all the colors that the Netherland Dwarf has <laughs> with the great culture of the Satin Club. And, and the old time Satin people were like, no, no, that's not what we're doing. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what we're doing, right? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what we're doing. Yeah, right. And uh, so I was raising colored rabbits, et cetera. Uh, and about 2009 was when we started getting the colored varieties in. Uh, Todd uh, was a dominant white breeder at the time, you know, multiple national wins. And uh, he was, we were trading back and forth whites for colors. I was more of a colored breeder. And then at some point in time, we just decided it was easier uh, just to show together because you know we're sharing greetings, we're sharing this, uh, we're sharing the workload, sharing the thought process. So when you may ask, why am I in a partnership? Uh, for all the right reasons. Uh, because we can uh, use multiple herd animals and move herds forward at a, at a faster pace because again, we may actually just about an hour before this, we're making a list of who's going home with what rabbits. Like, okay, so obviously each one of us brought where uh, some of these people that may have their, I don't think anyone on this panel has all their rabbits together. Like, oh, you do, okay. Uh, but so he has his rabbits at his house, I have my rabbits at my house. Uh, we make decisions together, we breed together, we never get rid of. We sell rabbits without talking to each other all the time, but we're talking about that like really, really good one. Um, because if I'm like, for example, uh, the, my favorite rabbit that we brought this year was a rabbit from Todd's barn, and I'm like, if she's for sale, she's coming home with me, because she'll go right into the squirrel program, uh, because she's broken blue to Siamese, so that's gonna fit right in. Uh, so I'm now able to add this beautiful coated animal, because we show as a co-op, but. For me, the strongest thing about our co-op is just being really good friends, and that was what we talked about when we first started, that we would never lose our friendship. And if that was what was gonna happen, because again, Alan, as you know, as everyone knows, we've had all these partnerships where, and when they break, it's usually not nice. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, very rarely do you have partnerships, unfortunately, in our hobby, where there's a break, and they're still friends, right? And again, we're all thinking about plenty of people, so, Again, like Deb and Nicole on this panel have been a partnership, I believe, for the longest. Because uh, I can't think of a time when it wasn't Deb and Nicole. I mean, I remember, I remember when you know, I was a kid showing Hollands and your kids showed Hollands and things like that. But like, you guys have been together. Todd and I have been a partner partnership since 2013. Uh, we I date. Think so. 
we debuted at NAS that year, and that was kind of what we thought, let's just let's go roll out with it. Uh, for me, uh, the mental health strength of having, uh, sometimes we're very competitive people, so if your toughest competitor is your colleague, you can get all the positivity about that. So we can still be competitive within, within each other um, and still have reap that success, and then just being able to be, again, supportive to each other, like just talking things through, um, when uh, both of us have had some very traumatic uh, situations last few years because of a partnership, nobody's heard went backwards because, you know, I was in a bad place, Todd stepped in. Todd was in a bad place, I stepped in. Again, yesterday I was having some issues and Todd checked in all the rabbits. So, um, yeah. Cool. Um, how about Deb? Can you represent uh, BFE? Go <laughs> ahead. All right. First of all, introduce yourself. We've got Todd Maragon, Leanne McKinney, Nicole Brockerty, Deborah Sandoval, Carol Green, Nate Burbridge, Ron, and Roger or Doc Sack. Uh, Roger. Roger. All right. Uh, Deb, what's okay. your story? Maybe two minutes. How about that? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <Matt. laughs> but Nicole and I were trying to figure out when we were driving up here how long we've been partners. And we weren't, we're not quite sure, but it's at years. least 20 years. Yeah. At least 20 years. And it kind of started mostly because we were friends for a long time before that, and then we started trading rabbits back and forth, and we just decided, well, you know, if we're gonna trade rabbits back and forth, it'd be easier if we're just partners. So that's what we decided to do. And that way we could, again, like the same thing that you guys were talking about, have the better bucks breed does in both of our herds, what was needed and what have you. And then of course, as we started getting older, it was not because we can't, neither of us do it by ourselves. So we need each other physically as well as emotionally in terms of taking care of the rabbits. And, you know, again, we didn't set up with any big stringent rules, although when we get to that part of the discussion, I have recommendations about that. But, <laughs> as an attorney lawyer. But we yeah, as a lawyer. <laughs> we but we didn't actually have a contract. We just did it, and, and it's been perfect and great. Awesome. So, Twenty years. Me? Monday. Yes, you're way better. <laughs> Come on. So, I haven't thought this through. What well, I was going to say. Two so here you go. So uh, we were just discussing when I don't. I kind of remember when we met, and Nate was somebody talking to me about a rabbit, and I didn't know who is this guy. And so we haven't known each other known each other a long time now but it took some time for us to um, decide to be partners so we, we both had American fuzzy lops mine started with my kids so it turns out my kids are kind of about the same age as Nate so we're not I, I, I think this you make a good point I'm getting older so you have to do more <laughs> but anyway my my kids had the rabbits and they grew up, they went to college, they got careers, and then I showed with Kendall for a while, but she really was too busy to do a lot. She still does some. And in the end, about when? What year do you think we decided? 2015. Yeah, that makes sense. Probably about 2015 that we decided that we would show together. We both had nice rabbits. We both, we traded them back and forth some. We enjoyed being together. If there's a disadvantage, we live 12 hours apart. Yeah. But, you know, there's cars. You can drive them. I know. So that's worked out really well for us. Good excuse to go to a show long distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just to go see their family. I mean, I could have almost have more grandkids because I just love their kids too. So we it's a great, do. great relationship. Yeah, that's, a, that, that, that's a great. That's a, yeah. <laughs> Pass this over. <laughs> <laughs> the other dog. Long. Yeah, I'm not a real doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like that. Mine's a You're joke. doctor of sheep. Yeah. yeah, right. My, my doctor is a joke. Anyway. <laughs> um, gosh, I met Ron in 80, 1980 or 81, and um, he hired me to judge a fair show in Corvallis uh, near where he was living. It was the Bennett County Fair, and um, we were both raised the same breed. We were raising satins at the time. And um, Ron and his sons were, his kids were raising satins as well. And we just kind of stayed in touch. We saw each other at shows over the years, um, developed a friendship from that. Um, 
what, late 90s you moved down to Southern Oregon? Yeah, 99. 99, yeah. so uh, I come out of Superior Gym one day and there's Ron <laughs> and uh, a woman I had, uh, I didn't know, and anyway, Ron was gonna get married yeah. and moved to Southern Oregon. And within the next two or three years, we went living across the road from each other almost by happenstance. Wow. And um, I thought, well, hell, let's just move across the road and tear my rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not sure how the partnership developed. It was kind of so casual. It was like, so, but it was kind of like, hey, you want to get married? <laughs> I was like, hey, you know, how, about we, like that? how about if we show his partner? Um, I'd been in a partnership before with a guy named Jerry McDonald, and it was McDonald and Hassock Group in the 80s. Yeah, 80s. And that just kind of rolled off the tongue better than my name first. With Ron, Ron has two first names, Ron and Scott. And we didn't want to be confused as Ron hasn't blue or Scott hasn't blue, either one. So, so we turned it the other way around. And uh, there you go, I mean, just pretty much based on friendship. It was so cool living across the road from each other because we could critique each other's rabbits and spend a lot of time with each other um, devaluating rabbits. And, uh, around a few years back, uh, moved about three hours north of me, and I really missed that. Uh, really missed that the last few years. So, um, but it's how it came about, uh, very casually. Started with a friendship. I mean, that's what I'm hearing from everybody. Really, it started with a friendship, and uh, and uh, I kind of enjoy him, and he tolerates me pretty well. So, <laughs> it goes. All right. Next question. And I, does anyone here except for Deb and Nicole have a partnership name that's other than the combination of last names? No, right? We took our two rabbit trees right, so, and yeah. so, but you guys actually have your own. You have a, you have a unique name other than yeah. Sandoval yeah. Rock. So yeah. Nicole, can you tell us how on earth you decided to uh, come up with a name? Because that was a that was a problem I recently had with my oh, with trio. Like, how, what, how do you do this? How do you do the name? Yeah. So huh. what goes into making a name for the partnership? Okay, what we did, um, we were each showing in individually for maybe 20 years, and her rabbit tree was um, Fallen, ears. Fallen Ears, and mine was Brock's Liberty Lops. So when we decided to do a partnership 20 years ago, Deborah said, well, we just need to, we'll just combine the rabbit tree name. So she actually came up with it, and she said, we'll just call ourselves Brock's Fallen Ears. And I said, oh, it works Sounds for me. Good. So, okay, fine. So that was easy. That was that was like a two minute conversation, and you know, oh fine, fine. That's what we'll do. Is <laughs> it that complicated? It made sense to all of us when we were It always. wasn't that complicated. <laughs> yeah. But um, all right, let's go into some some politics. Uh, some national specialty clubs, and I don't know if they're breeds that any of you have worked with, preclude people from partnering if there's a distance, if there's rabbits that are housed at different locations and except for Deb and Nicole, everyone in this room Yeah, and ours used has, to be quite a bit of yeah. right. When we started, but we were- You're the only ones currently where your rabbits are at one location, right. but everyone else, rabbits were distant. Anyone have any experience with that in clubs? I know of no. clubs that yeah. are that way, but Isn't none of ours are. Yeah, Minyarx are in the same yeah, district. Yeah. Yeah. So Minyarx preclude people from like, anyone except for Deb and Nicole could not raise Minyarx together. According to it. Right. And show together. And show together. Yeah. And, and to get points. Yeah. If you wanted to do it and not care about the points, then. Got it. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah. So you can do it, you just can't get points. And yeah. Well. Okay, good point. so. yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the issue is the clubs don't want, yeah. is the clubs don't want this uh, conglomerate taking over their sweepstakes contest. Mm. So, yeah. um, I don't know, our, our club has never been that big. Hasn't been that big. Even, even in the in the Hall and Loft Club, in the Hall and Loft Club, because I used to do sweepstakes, even though it's not precluded, it's not against the rules, there's been a lot of talk about wanting to make it against the rules because people who don't have a partner to show with, you know, raise the, well, it's not fair, I know I can't get as many points, you know, I'm not going to be able to compete with these people that are showing together. And when Nicole and I first started, where hers were down in San Diego and mine were up in Fresno, there were times when 
on the same weekend, she would go to one show at one location and I would go to another show at another location. And people go, like, well, that's not fair. And I'm like, well, it's not against the rules. So, you know, so what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? That is and, legitimate though. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, I understand why people think it shouldn't be that way, but that's like saying, well, you have a herd of a barn with 200 and I have a herd with 20, I can't compete with you. Okay, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's life. Right. So, anyway. That's good. Nate, do you have anything more to say about it? No, no, no. no? I was just going to say, I think it, it, we're in the same district. And then yeah. ARBA has districts, and our, yeah. our Breed Club has districts, so we're both in District 2. So, yeah. just same because, yeah. just because it's, it's a 12 hour drive in the park doesn't mean that it should be right. illegal to do that. But if, okay, here's a maybe a, a turn on this. If, and pretending that you guys are still showing rabbits together, everything's normal. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy. If your club proposed that that partnerships had to be at the same premise, does anyone have anything to say about that? Like, would oh, you? I, we, I, we would. We could care less. Right, because again, yeah. our, our purpose is, yeah, our, our goal in life is not to win sweepstakes. Yeah. Our goal in life is to continue to move herds forward. So. Produce it, good animals. Right, so again, I, we would still come to convention, local shows, they're going to give me because, again, I'm not doing this for a sweepstakes right. plaque from the stock club. So and if you were doing grand champions and registrations, those legs are still valid. Yeah, right. So it, everything good. still fits with the with, with the ideology, but I, I know that we can still show together. Yeah. You guys probably do. Anybody? Yeah, another part to it, though, for specialty clubs is maybe yeah. break it off. You, you broke it, Nate. I broke it. Okay, there goes your point. Right there. <laughs> you can just speak up. All right, my point is, if specialty clubs feel that way, then break it up into its separate section. So have a partnership sweeps and then a single breeder sweeps. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a problem with that because I do think, I mean, there is some legitimacy to that and I am sensitive to that. I want people to right. uh, feel good and feel a part of things. Um, and it is, I mean, that, that can be hard when Carol's going to a show in California and I'm going to another show. I mean, that can, that can be hard and I'm sensitive to that. I agree. But but also I the thing is though as we all agree with all this none of us were motivated no. by yeah. sweepstakes to be partnership. Right. No. So no. those are the yeah. partnerships that, in well, my opinion, fail. Those are the ones that those that, that, that don't work out because again yeah, we've right. all known about these partnerships and basically they become like super teams in sports. Like they have yeah. they don't mm -hmm. have that good teamwork. So again we've all said the same thing that we all yeah. were friends first. So this was just like. You guys were neighbors. I didn't even know that story. Really? Yeah. Did you know that? Before? No, I didn't. Like that's. I mean, I've known you guys Amazing. for years. It's the first time I've ever heard uh, that. that. So, yeah. so Roger, did you guys? Um, mm -hmm. Did you have a concern over sweepstakes points? You know, to, as your team, or I didn't. Did <laughs> no, you? never. No. That, <laughs> no. Excuse me, Alan. I'm just no, I I jumped in. Yeah, uh, never so, I find it very unique that all of you guys have a partnership, and basically. It, the sweepstakes was not a part of it to make that formulation. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. That's, and, that's, and, right. And again, but we've, anything, lots of we've had success in sweepstakes, yeah. but that's just because we're very competitive. I breeders. think in anything, yeah. it was the opposite for us. We didn't like competing against each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. We didn't want to do be competing. We want, we were friends. Mm -hmm. So it's a so. <laughs> At the end result, it's a good outcome now that you've established what you're doing, you know, that you can build sweepstakes points and make things happen. But as a partnership, that was not the, that no, was not no. the intent. No, but again, those are the partnerships that don't work. Yeah, yeah. I, to me, yeah, I those so are too. what I don't even call partnerships. Those are. Deborah has a name anymore. <laughs> what is it, Deborah? Those, those are, those are. <laughs> showing conglomerates oh, right. and, and they're 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 only showing together for the purpose of combining points. sweepstakes points they know nothing about each other's herd they don't share rabbits they don't do any of the financial stuff that i'm sure we're going to talk about they just are showing together for the purposes of combining herds and that's all for combining right. points and, yeah yeah i would acknowledge that you know some people care about sweepstakes points dearly that's um, fine though. That's okay. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's, that's yeah. the thing. That's cool. I don't. I mean, the irony is that the last year I raised rabbits with Ron, we won the sweet. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm talking about. And see, I if if a club would suggest that we do like Nate was saying, yeah. have sweepstakes for co-ops and sweepstakes for the regulars, I would just tell the club, no, we'll just. 
clubs don't have sweepstakes. Yeah, we're fine. Because as someone that's worked with the national clubs, I was never sweepstakes chair, but I solved a lot of problems. And I was going to say, and as add as, more rules to this, we can barely get people to do that job anyways. As, as a past sweepstakes person, I don't think that would work. <laughs> so anyway, no, nice I idea. Just but. Um, kind of on the same topic, did any of you in here receive negative feedback when you did this? Or along the way, did you ever get, I mean, Deb, you kind of alluded to it that people said, well, that's not fair. But was there anything else? Not to well, us we, we, we sure. want, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> do you get a mute over here? Yeah, <laughs> it's not like that. Yeah, like, you could have the same thing. I'm on that. Um, we would have formed a partnership two years earlier had we not have a dear friend in our breed who said, no, you can't. And all right, okay, we won't. So we did. But that friend then started a partnership, and we looked at each other and said, "Okay, well now we can." <laughs> so let's yeah, do this. let's do it. Okay, let's uh, move on to workload. Um, the question is: Do you keep a true homogenous breeding program, or do you function separately? Anybody want to take that one? Well, true yeah. homogenous herd, or is it is it separate? I'd say true homogenous. Um, the key part for a partnership is that you have to have herds that complement each other. Carol had amazing heads on her fuzzy bombs. I mean, just absolutely amazing heads and ears. And I had better bodies. And I felt like we were able to really, as we were trading rabbits back and forth and breeding them, we noticed that they really complemented each other, the, the offspring. Um, so it was a natural fit um, as far as the breeding. And we still do that, sending rabbits back and forth. Um, for workload, I think it's really, really important in a partnership. Oh, I love this lady so much. Um, <laughs> you have to always think of the other partner first, period. Um, there, Everybody has ups and downs. And the key part in a partnership is recognizing that and helping each other and not ever feeling like I'm doing more, so-and-so's doing, just lose it. Because if you feel that way, if you're constantly comparing, this is not going to last. Oh, and you just track. have to like, <laughs> you guys, like you, we, it, it comes down to that because there's going to be track. time. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do tally sheets. That's, that's the hardest thing. Crap that sucks. I mean, taking the video, Nate, watching you, that's, that's the whole heart of this thing. Uh, you guys have partnerships because you have an emotional investment to succeed at something you all love. That's, that's really, very true. really good. Anyone else want to touch on that? Does anyone here actually Don't keep two to. separate herds? <laughs> apparently, apparently, I've been nominated. <laughs> so uh, we've kind of had two separate herds. We, we seldom have actually exchanged genetics. I don't know if that's the right term. When we've, we've had the used. same varieties, we have. Yeah, right. particularly when we had larger sounds. Yeah. You know, I, Roger had a nice stable of herd bucks and. That gave me a lot of extra pages because I didn't need to maintain those. <laughs> uh, when we got into the mini satins, um, yeah, actually, I think I started my torts by acquiring a black doe through really? you. Yeah, you did. That's yeah, awesome. you exactly. traded a blue buck for a tort for me. Yeah, so you know there, there has been some exchange. So we did um, conspire. You know, Roger say, "Hey, I just got a new kick up here." come down and sample some. So, uh, you know, I'd drift down to his house and we would drink a little beer and we'd look at some rabbits and he'd show me what he had and I probably made some comments that may or may not have been useful, but it, it was fun. So for six, Ron, as you're saying, for a successful partnership then, alcohol is a really good thing to base it on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> some, some, Utah, some of us right? get yeah. 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 others may not. So uh, I think that's as much as I want to say on the topic. But so it's been you, a fun adventure. Are you saying that you maybe didn't have your herds combined because each of you focused on a certain color? Would that would that yeah. reflect yeah. why they weren't homogenous? Yeah, they yeah. weren't compatible. I mean, torts are not good. And you wanted to keep it that way? Like, Roger, you wanted otters? And, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know, Ron, what you... I have torts. 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 Okay. Primarily. Yeah. Beautiful torts. Not yeah. just torts. Like, but beautiful torts. Yeah. Yeah. 
guess I forgot my scholar. Thank really you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But even still, like even this, it's good. So yeah, it wasn't really practical to change exchange. That makes sense, right? Until so you know. yourself surrounded by that. Mm -hmm. Right. And you produce those. You know. Okay. Really, for your breeds, it's tort and broken tort, fine, yeah. and then yeah. if there's and some stuff that comes along the way, yeah, 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 frost now. Yeah. Yeah. Focus, and then you guys. How about colors? Do you, um, do you keep colors mainly, separately from the um, or vice versa. Mainly the chin varieties are at Lane's house, and the intense varieties are mine. Uh, How much exchange change is done? Quite a, a lot. Bit. Yeah, like I said, even like right now, it's like right. we're doing that today. Like, yeah. okay, I'm If something pops interest. out, like yeah. this blue Siamese, Brooklyn Siamese popped out, I don't want to put it back in the torts. Right. Yeah, we can yeah, put yeah, it into the satin the chins. Chin, yeah. They're chin based in satin. So. Perfect. Yeah. And how often do you exchange? Is it? Are you that close that you can do this on the weekend? Or yeah, you yeah, well, yeah. Or? We we live about an hour and a half apart. Hour and like a half. we're basically a hundred percent, like the same highway separates. I live on the, like the Illinois side of Indiana. He lives on the Ohio side of Indiana. Right. But we're like a straight shot from each okay. other. So, so it's, yeah. it's, it's still somewhat. Convenient. Yeah, and then we and judge almost over, every weekend. Right. Like, uh, I get most of my rabbit feed from him since he's a hindhold dealer. So yeah. That makes it easy. Yep. Um, how do you uh, next question is, <laughs> how do you divide your roles? For example, does one person handle all the sales and communications um, while the other takes on jobs like pedigrees? For example, in this new thing I'm doing, I don't I like PTSD social media these days. So uh, I made sure that Jake could do the, the pedigree or the, the social media, and I don't do pedigrees. I hate pedigrees. He can do that Me too, too Alan. Right, right. I I I I actually hand wrote my pedigrees. On a napkin? No. All the way up until me and Todd co opt. Wow. And so, That's so a statement. yeah, oh so I was doing, I mean, I started Rabbits in 1988. I did, we co opted in 13, and then I went over there and put all this stuff in his Evans. And even when I was going through, you doing, put the stuff in the Evans? Well, no, or? We, 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 we did whatever. But, but, but anyway, uh, and then when I, when I did the squirrels, you know, squirrels, when I got those recognized, those were a separate variety, so they weren't even in his Evans. I actually did all my presentation with handwritten pedigrees. Wow. Roger saw them when he was on the set, the standards right. committee. So yeah, um, so yeah, Todd takes care of all pedigrees. When people ever ask me for pedigrees, like Derek borrowed a borrowed a buck at Nass and got some babies out of it, and then he's like, "Hey, I need a pedigree for that." I'm like, "You're gonna have to talk to Todd." So is, is there a trade off? If he does pedigrees, do you like do the entries, for example? Or she does or, usually put in our convention entry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We usually kind of for convention entries. It's not a big deal. I we, mean, we we go back and work. for convention entries we go oh, back no, and it's forth. It's not a big deal. We'll come to each house. Mm -hmm. He likes the ovens though, so. Yeah, and the the hardest part is she doesn't tattoo stuff that isn't shown. So she'll be like, mm, I, know, I have to think about that. Yeah, you one. have that part rabbit. You know, you're already like yeah. you get that dough, and you're like, oh. She's going straight in the breeding program. So who's that out of? I never tattoo it, it because that's yeah. cleaning, things like that. Who, who does that? I would say with Nicole and I, that is one of the big advantages in our partnership is we have different strengths and weaknesses. And, and our partnership Absolutely. helps so much in terms of like Nicole is very organized and has everything all down and makes lists. And, and she does all the feeding because I'm working. I mean, Right now, it's particularly nice because we only live like 10 minutes apart. Mm -hmm. And so she comes She's over every work. day and feeds while I'm at work. And I do all the breedings. I do all the tattooing because her hands shake. You don't do all the breedings. No, you do all the breedings. Oh, okay. You do all the breedings. <laughs> but but yeah, I can't tattoo. I, I, I literally can't tattoo. Yeah. And I, I can't give injections. I gave that up years and years ago. If that ever has to be done. Famously, for people that live on the West Coast and, and work with you guys, um, you typically will write at the judging table, right? Well, Deb runs the rabbit. So you do have a division. We, and do, we try to take turns writing, writing and writing. Right. But, but yes. Yeah, but, yes. Whole, yeah. but we definitely yeah. have different things that, like, I don't do any tattooing. And mm -hmm. all the breeding goes into her tablet and her computer. I keep track on paper, but I don't, you know, she keeps the official records, mm -hmm. you know, electronically. And um, yeah, I'm I'm more computer savvy. I do Way all more. the all the you know if something mechanical like the swamp coolers break down or whatever, she fixes I fix it. everything. Right, right. We you know, that kind and, of stuff. So. and also, Deborah is the strongest woman that I have ever known. You might be in there, I don't know, <laughs> but really and truly, she is incredibly strong, and I am not, and that is really worked to our advantage. She, a lot of things she has fixed that I could not have fixed, that I would have had to call 
somebody to come and do and that she's able to do I mean so yeah that's that's a big part of our partnership too anybody else want to say about, about that too, really quick. Yeah, here, go. Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I was going to add, like, veal, each tattoo on rabbits, but that's actually how you know which farm they were born at. Um, if they come from Todd's house, they have a number. If they came from my house, they have a name. Do any of you guys use, like, a prefix um, in your tattoos? Well, there's no. an A and then an O. Or a T. Yeah. 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 But that's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, this is GB. I don't want it. So. <laughs> What's next? Cool. Yeah. Um, in terms of breeding and stuff like that, we have basically separate rabbit trees. Um, I did the entries, but it was more that uh, clubs want you to enter exactly the same way yes. all yes, the time. Do. And so I just developed a thing on that spreadsheet that let us do that. Like Ron and send me the entries, and I enter for both of us. But basically, we had separate. Um, we are on separate tattooing and color mm -hmm. decisions and, and um, all of that. Um, got our own separate tattoo gigs going on. So. Yeah, I, I was not as imagined as, as Roger has been. <laughs> For anybody who's ever gotten a pedigree from Roger, the names of these rabbits were always some really were, interesting. Some were fun. That yeah. really surprises us. Yeah, when I <laughs> yeah when I when I first knew Roger, you were using um, I don't recall exactly, but it was city names in oh, yeah. Iowa yeah. or yeah. Illinois. Right. Right. It was like what kind of a name? Well, that's is where this? the convention was going to be. Apparently. Yeah, Lima, DeKalb so. yeah. was a rabbit that showed up on a pedigree I had. I'm not so imaginative. It's just. <laughs> a very short sequence yeah. of whatever comes to mind. So we kind of just touched on the topic of breeding. How do you make decisions? You know, there's, if there's like one really good buck for him, he wins a big show, like a convention or national, you both want to use them and you're not near each other. I guess you guys are just, you're excluded, Devin Hall. Um, how do you decide who's going to be bred to whom and who's going to get that buck? for six months or whatever. It's, ever, it's so informal. Like, yeah. this is like not even, we just don't think of this kind of stuff because you really, it's just like you're at the show. And it sounds all like the all, all of you are so organic in the way yes, you approach so this. Yes, it's so organic. Like, yeah. like, it's it not didn't like happen it like uh, out of necessity. I, and I, even if it wins, it's, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not a big deal when a rabbit wins, but we, it's the rabbits that produced it. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah, yeah. Just go do it again. Yeah, yeah. Half the, I mean, like last Nas, she had opposite of breeding. Put it in the auction. And okay, so, do, you, do you say it like that, by the way? Nice. Like back home, be like, oh, your doe won. Um, or I do you, don't know. Wait, when you're talking well, about. Well, it was a squirrel. Yeah. So it's from your well, yeah, yeah. And, part, and part of it is kind of because of even with the mini satins, like, we're co op, but, but like, Todd, I always, the torts are always going to be Todd. He got that variety in. The squirrels will always be me. Mm -hmm. I got that variety in. And the same thing is going to go with Rogers. So a lot of times the squirrels are always like, your doe, your, because. Again, it's it's the yeah. aesthetic of, of the actual variety, but yeah. That makes sense. But it's not ever like cut up. Like it's like yours. Oh, yeah. Like, I, yeah, it's yeah, so it, funny it, to hear somebody say yeah. that because it's like this is what new people get. Yeah, because I might think about. Yeah, and then and then and then and then things like awards. It's like um, we lay it all out. You just yeah. Pick what, you, you, you want you something? Want, okay. And then like me, like I used to never. I used to I never put up awards, and I had nothing else to do in COVID, so I hung up awards in my second living room and. So now Todd will be like, oh, that'll look good in your living room. Take that home. Like, even if it's a rabbit from his barn or the one year he thought that that sled was the, the most terrible thing to win for best in show. And I thought it was the coolest thing that I could ever win. Yeah, it, it was, was at sled. the Christmas show. That and like, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Apparently, Leanne thought otherwise. <laughs> yeah, Carol, what were you saying? Well, now I've forgotten everything I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, I would say one thing to start, and maybe this relates to other questions. I actually think, and I adore Nate, we are both super competitive people. So we don't want to be competitive with each other, but I, so we're happy just to be together and be able to always be happy when we're doing well because we're doing it together. But I would say it's, this summer is we had something unusual where Nate had tons and tons and tons of juniors and he was going to have to call really pretty juniors because he didn't have room. He had to have room for the Frosties. And I had like no juniors, but maybe no. two, which then 
proceeded to die when I, <laughs> so, rabbits. So, so we drove to Salt Lake City one day and loaded up rabbits that night and drove home the next day. And then I showed one of them, which actually had been one I had bred, but I showed it a show the following day and it got best in show. So, yeah. so it's just like so. We just happened. That's just the way it just happened. But they come back and forth, so it's not mm -hmm. like there's so, a, yeah. Um, because we're running on time, um, and I want to you guys, let's go to Deb. The, the, the issue or the, the topic of a contract, and Nate is probably going to roll his eyes, even though he's an attorney, they would never have a contract, right? <laughs> but you have a different take on this, okay. Okay. from what I've heard. We, we, we talked about this we, we, in preparation of this, and we did talk about the meeting because I wasn't sure what you were going to ask us about, but you know, for all of us, as we've all said, we all just kind of sort of slid into a partnership. And that's, and that happens sometimes, where you're just so, such good friends for so long, you just become partners without hardly even noticing. But that's not how a lot of partnerships happen. And I think it's important if you're doing, planning a partnership, first of all, you need to decide why are you going to have a partnership? What's your goal? You know, you guys have got the goal of moving the rabbits forward, which is perfect. But some people may have a different kind of goal, like to, you know, do sweepstakes points or what have you. Or one person may have a particularly good buck or dough or something that they want to share or what have you. So if you, you know what your goals are going in, that'll help you define your partnership. And then I think it's important for people to talk about not only the easy parts, but the harder parts. You know, like what happens if, like the things you're asking about. If you've got a really good rabbit and you're sharing it back and forth, how are you going to divide up the babies? Awesome. Now, in my mind, a true real partnership, which I think all of us have, you think of all the rabbits as our rabbits. It's not your rabbits and my rabbits. It's they're all my, they're all ours, and so then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's breeding them, who has which rabbits, what right. have you. You sell a rabbit, you split up the money. It doesn't matter who bred it where it grew up or anything like that. They're all our rabbits. But that may not be how some people want to do it. If they don't want it to be our rabbits, then you need to have this, have a plan of how are you going to divide up the babies? You know, you're going to flip a coin, who gets first chip, first pick out of this particular litter. You know, those are what I consider to be sort of limited partners where they're just together for a limited I think it's purpose. The reason why a lot of us end up being partners though is because of that, because you were doing this so organically, and then at the end of the day, you're like, "Well, who gets to show this one? Is it yours right. or is it mine? You know, is it is it the father or you know, yeah. hey, that's my, my buck, your dough." So. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. And and that's what happens. People start out just doing that informally, and then they decide, like, "Okay, fine, we'll be partners." Well, that's good, and most of the time you'll be fine. But how are you going to divide up the money? You know, that's where people often have problems. So, and I want to talk about that. That's, separate, that's a separate topic. Well, okay. No, okay. let's talk about it now. Okay. Yeah, because like I say, for Nicole because it's, and I, it's the last I think big thing that we should talk right. about. The, all of our rabbits are our rabbits, even when we were living ten hours apart. Yeah. Didn't mm -hmm. matter where they were born, where they were bred. When we go to convention, we take off the expenses that each of us pay to get here and what have you, and then we split the money right down the middle. Doesn't matter where the rabbits were yeah. bred, you know, where they grew up or anything like that. And of course that's easier now because they all live together, but but even so, <laughs> I you want, know. I want to add to that. Um, so during the year when we sell a rabbit at just rate local shows, that money always goes back into the rabbitry. All we, we you know, kind of the fun to pay for feed right. when we're gone to pay somebody to feed, to feed for us. All the rest of the year, the only time we really actually divide up any profit is nationals and convention. On the rest of the year, we, you know, that it, it just, just goes pays back, for the expenses. Back, yeah. in, back in to pay for whatever we can pay, you know, because yeah. you're never going to pay for everything. No. Not even no. close. Right. Not even close. All right, what, what do others do when it comes yeah. to entry fees, feed, supplies, right. cages? I mean, we split all of our expenses down the middle. <laughs> um, and as far as Selling rabbits. If it's born in her barn, she takes the money for it. Uh, if barn. we if we win money, we always put that back to the entry entry fee. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
but that's how if I if I paid the entries, then she'll pay me for half of it. Or it all flushes out in the end. Usually we have this running total of how much money do you owe me? And it's like, I don't even, he's so, he's so worried about it. It's like on a spreadsheet and I'm like, okay, I'll, I can write you a check for that dollar and 20 cents. <laughs> but, but again, we want to make sure that we're not taking advantage of each other right. because again, sometimes based on our, our judging schedules, like if he's doing all flyaways and I'm local, I'm going to be going to all these shows and then I'm paying for all the entry fees, but that's our deal. Everything is just, we split down the middle. When we come to big shows like this, we discuss ahead of time what number are we looking for? Because obviously we can go through and make a rough shop list and we have a hundred on there. Not bring a hundred rabbits to convention. We're both are too old for that. So this year the magic number is we're not going over 60. So pick out the 60 best rabbits between the two herds, make sure there's plenty of varieties and go from there. Back to um, selling rabbits. If you had a buck from Todd at your place and you both collectively decided to eventually sell it, who gets the money for that one? It's been living your place, but it started at Todd's. How? Oh. No, you guys are laughing, but this yeah, is like I, I, this I, is like I, a question that people have. Know, because yeah. sometimes we have done. I, I right? don't. Would be, but 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 again. But usually it's going to the cull buyer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Usually, okay. Usually, all right. Like, yeah. Does anyone here because have that? Brain, it doesn't have a longevity. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't. So ours is different. I mean, <laughs> we haven't it. like messed up. The money. <laughs> I don't know. We don't like the money. Just is. You like, ever even keep track? Yeah. You no, we don't. Not at all. No. Like Carol goes to like tons of shows and she pays all the entry fees and so I probably owe you money. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, tell me how much I owe you, Dr. Green. <laughs> A little bit of guilt there. Yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. that's true. He always drives yeah. the rabbits. So well, that's one of the worst things. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I sneak him a check. Forgive no, it to you Lisa. To, like, it's not... but, but yeah, the driving and flying stuff, like I say, when we do conventions, yeah. it's like if one of us flies and the other one drives, the one that drives drives, but the one that flies gets there early and has all of the coops ready. Right. Yeah. With shaving, everything set up, cups, yeah. everything. So, yeah. so that way, when the when the driver gets there, boom, they're done. But if you sold the rabbit, that was this sounds very complicated. Get your contract. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad. So, now sell your sell your contract. You plan it going in, and then you don't have problems. That's the whole purpose of a contract, sure. right? Sure. Is when two people are going on an adventure together that they are on the same page so that later on one doesn't go, wait a minute, that isn't what I envisioned. I envisioned it that we would split it. I envisioned that, you know, if I raised it, it would be my money and, you know, what have you. If you talk about it and you're in agreement ahead of time, then there's no problems, right? right? So that's that's what you got to do. That's the, that's the important part is that you're on the same page with your partner. So, well, but you gotta also say, so that's the other part to the strength in this is if there's an issue, you need to say, and you deal with it. Mm -hmm. Be comfortable so to bring up a business. Yeah, if, well, I, I'm having this problem, what are your thoughts? You know, and, and that's a partnership. Right, right, a real partnership. So I'm thinking we should have called our partnership the Laissez Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe simple. <laughs> um, it sounds like we have. Space literally, if, if Ron had five and I had three, well, he pays for five and pay for three of the cows. And, and um, it, yeah, so I don't, we yeah. should have done, but that's why you're on the rocks. Actually, our partnership is not the other round. You were doing a partnership before it was cool. So it's true. That's a, yeah. 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 All right, we're running out of battery. Do you, you're, you're here too, and, and I'm sure you've got a question or, yeah, or, a, uh, or a statement, Alan Barr. Can you guys quantify, I mean, this partnership works out tremendously well because all of you are qualified, very good breeders in what you do. And then you blend yourselves together. Now I'm sitting here hearing you guys talk and how close you all are. Your individual strengths, now that you combine, how much farther do you think you're ahead mm, by being together 
Oh, yeah. then, then, yeah. that, and that and that to me I think is that it's called I think the term is synergy where I'm yes. trying to get to yeah. mm -hmm. that synergy from you guys is giving you your longevity and your mm -hmm. success and everything that's there and I think that's the, to me one of the positive aspects of what this partnership scheme goes because you know I'll be really good but what I'm hearing all of you are individuals yeah. I mean yeah. you're all individuals and you blended yourselves together with the main purpose of improving your your breeds and your varieties, it and should I be think, everyone's goal. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely, yeah. and that's but why you can do it at a, at a more exponential rate. Because again, we have a lot bigger gene pool of animals that again that we can do. That's one of the reasons why Todd and I very rarely buy rabbits because we can basically we have something in that. And then, as we all know, as being good breeders, those super related rabbits that that's where the secret is. The secrets mm -hmm. of the sauce of not doing a lot of outcrosses. But I, I, would, I wouldn't be able to, again, do some of the, again, uh, putting a denser coat by using a white buck or whatever if I wasn't with Todd. But again, like the whole thing is, yeah, like when you say that, 100%. Like I would be just, you know, I probably, I'm gonna, I guess I wouldn't probably even be in the but hobby. This is such a good way to end. So um, let's everyone make, make a remark about where partnerships have brought you. And where Thank it you. works out really well is even though we pick, you know, if we judge to get – a breed back to back it's almost exactly the same rabbits when we judge but she favors a little bit different style and i favor a little different style and those two styles complement because it keeps me from going the stretching extreme. too extreme this way and her from going too extreme that way and it's like checks and balances yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's how it works out good i mean that's where it's really made our mini sentence strong. And I will and you, say the thing that we love the most is when you have that animal that was going to be a coal, and I'd be like, Todd, you should just coal that. It ends up being a superstar. So you always can rub it in each other's face. Like, you remember you told me to old coal this one? So that's kind of how we just, that, that, that's the summation of our partnership. That's it's fun. made our friendship stronger. It's made, oh, our, it's, stronger. It's, it's made our, our love of the hobby stronger. Very cool. All right, BFE. I'd say the same thing. I mean, there's a synergy, which is a perfect term. There's synergy in the rabbits of sharing the rabbits that you have. Like, of course, like right now, they're all together, but it didn't used to be that way. And and we, I had strengths, she had strengths. I had weaknesses, she had weaknesses, combining those together. But there's also the synergy of the people. I mean, which I talked about earlier, our strengths and weaknesses as persons in terms of the work and also in terms of evaluating the rabbits, we have a rule that if one, we both have veto power in right. terms of if we're looking at a rabbit and one of us says, oh, I don't want to keep this one, and the other one says, yeah, no, I want it. It's like, well, fine, it stays, okay. you know, yeah. it stays. And um, we we look at rabbits a little, a little bit differently, differently you know, differently. And, and I think that helps. So, you know, anyway. And what about uh, Nicole, what, what do you think that what has BFE done for you that you could maybe do when you were living in San Diego and doing oh, this on your own for I, many years? I wouldn't be doing this today if I was by myself. Yeah, I, I just would not be doing it. The driving, the overnight stuff, you know, to go to a show somewhere, even like convention, uh, we, we drove for three days to get back here. Uh, there's no way I would do any of that by myself. I probably wouldn't have even done it maybe even 10 years ago to drive to convention three days. It used to be by so myself. much easier to be able to fly, but yeah, you used to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in those good old days when we were flying on, thirty yeah. in a kennel. Yeah, we, we flew around, but now it, you pretty much have to drive, and there's right. just there's no way. Plus, I can't catch you. <laughs> <laughs> so Nate already brought up wanting to work together because my rabbits are with the head and his are the bodies. And I, I think right now I need to, you know, improve my head so, you know, on my rabbits and at my house and so on. So we still are going to keep switching back and forth. Mm -hmm. But the best, the best thing we got out of it is just friendship and yeah. not just the rabbits. The rabbits are family. The, that's the deal. Yeah, we're yeah. the happy. Yeah, it's basically yeah, true. true. It's true. happy it's true. Yeah. result of that. Yeah. Life is really hard. Greens are just an amazing, amazing family. I mean, we, the kids and the cousins, the aunts and uncles, and I mean, everybody just is, yeah, we've just grown really, really close in this partnership. We have great spouses, too. That's like a big, huge piece of this is, yeah, my wife, 
driving all over everywhere and Jim taking care of everything and driving everywhere. So it's never just a partnership, it's right. you know, just, but no, it's the relationships. They talk about the rabbits come and go, but in a partnership, they really come and go. And you have to be willing to do that and realize that rabbits, I mean, they do, they'll be gone tomorrow, but you'll be friends and partners for your life. Mm -hmm. cool. Oh, of course, the wisdom can I share. <laughs> when Roger and I started this partnership, I, you've been really active nationally. Um, we were judging. Um, my uh, experience at that Is this point. A complaint? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, right. <laughs> my experience has been you know, more with my kids raising rabbits and on a local basis. So getting to partner with Roger you know, was almost like a mentorship. He may not have thought about it that but I got introduced to a lot of people. Um, you know, it's like a immediate, you know, you're in the in crowd. You, yeah. You're, you're cool. Tag, tag with Roger. Because Roger's Doc Satin. Yeah. yeah. So, there isn't a satin breeder in this world that doesn't love him. Yeah. But the ability to talk to somebody who judged and got to see but rabbits in other locations was really beneficial for yes. me. It really gave me a lot of insights that I might have never acquired. Yep. Well, um, all of those things, plus um, having somebody um, that will set up your rabbits and critique them, and we can walk around the table and you respect their opinion, and whether you take it or don't take it, <laughs> um, you know, it's but it makes you think incredibly twice. valuable. Yeah, it makes you think. And um, yeah, there were there were times when I ended up saving rabbits that I might not have saved had I been on my own, and. Uh, they made a difference so yep. big deal very cool thank you all very much for your time today we know we know sorry Take oh yeah I, I, why do you think i recorded it <laughs> so i can watch it again and then show it to my partners <laughs> get on this all right thanks guys have a great convention <laughs>